Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex. I am finishing my first year of medical school in a couple of weeks. So um, this might be the last video I post before I'm done with first year just because I need to really buckle down and study. But I, a very long time ago, asked my subscribers and a lot of you were new here so you weren't involved in this but this was probably at the beginning of my first year I asked people to ask me questions as a medical student that I could answer and then they ended up being like very specific questions that I did not know the answer to so now at the end of my first year I'm gonna revisit them I'm gonna actually answer them they have been sitting in my drafts for a very long time so um, I will do my best to answer these questions and I hope that they're helpful and I am hoping to do and ask ask me questions about like first year experience now that I've done it um, and that poll will probably be on YouTube and on my Instagram so if you want to follow my Instagram it's at Ali Bon Bon but if you don't it's okay it's totally fine so I'm just gonna go through these questions first one is from Nicholas Cheney he asks um, how does research work in medical school is it independent or faculty-led also, you should do Vlogmas and post a vlog at least once a week in December if you have time. So I did not do a Vlogmas, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so research in medical school is, from my understanding, it can be faculty-led. And from my understanding, it can be like student-led but faculty-mentored. So um, if you feel so empowered, you can run a project by yourself. You can run your own project. You can start your own project. But if you also want to hop on a project that's already running that they need assistance with, you can do that as well. Well, I am not currently involved in research. I'm not really interested in a specialty that needs like a super strong research background. I do already have a publication from undergrad and we have a research year, a third year. I've thought about getting involved in research, but honestly have felt like fairly overwhelmed by this year. And um, I've talked to like my mentors and I think it's okay that I'm not researching right now. So that's like something to think about as you're going in is like, if you're interested in a specialty that does need a super, super strong residency application research heavy wise, I think that might be something that you think about earlier, but like as far as like internal medicine, I think the next one is from Candace. She says, um, or they, I don't know your pronouns, I'm sorry. Um, Candace asks, what happens to undergrad loans in medical school? Are they paid off before or just like what, what's the whole deal? I'm going into pre-med and I'm really curious about this. So from my understanding, luckily it didn't have undergrad loans, but from my understanding is you still have those loans and you are paying them um but they might not be accruing interest i'm not really sure what the process is but they still exist so they're not paid off before you go to medical school and so that those loans like add on to the loans that you have for medical school unfortunately yeah but i do know some people that will like use their leftover money from their loans and like pay <laughs> their like undergrad loans with them um which i would have to sit down with numbers and like see what the best financial decision would be but you definitely do still have to pay for that when you yeah yes lots of money okay next question is how much do you study and how do you keep yourself motivated to study for many hours a day right now i'm having such a hard time studying because it just feels all very overwhelming um i would say um it depends on the block how much you study it depends on like the material depends on your previous familiarity with the material as well i would say that like on any given day i'm probably studying or doing something school related from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, minus time for like exercise, eating and like cooking and maybe one other activity. Um, that would be like on a weekend. Some days like during the week, it feels nonstop. And some days during the week, I feel kind of lazy and I don't get things done as much as I want to. But I would say that unfortunately for me, it feels like pretty much any moment that I have, I should be studying or doing something productive, like cleaning my house or exercising or like practicing self care in a way that's like cooking and cleaning and making sure that my house is happy. So I study all the time basically is what I'm saying and how do I stay motivated? I think Things that have helped me in the past are like setting timer, setting time goals. So we have our exam coming up and I really just need to sit down and be like, I'm gonna study six hours for each week of material that we've had, um, or three hours for every week of material, whatever, or like I'm gonna finish this block of things. Because I feel like once you have momentum and you're like, okay, I finished this hour, or I'm getting closer to this goal, it's much more, it's much easier for you to digest a big goal like studying for a 12-week exam when you have like 
milestones to reach for sure. How much do you study and how did your methods change from undergrad? Also, what are some MCAT tips? I would love to hear a variety, thank you. So yeah, I just answered the how much do I study? What? How have my methods changed from undergrad? One thing that's been like really hard to wrestle with from undergrad was I feel like I was able to know the material and know everything about the material and be super curious and ask a bunch of questions and look at extra resources and feel really solid about something. Whereas in medical school, there just isn't enough time for you to know everything about everything or to like know everything about what you're interested in. Like it just moves very quickly. And so you need to keep moving with it. And sometimes that means that you forego some curiosity and some of like your passions and it's a little bit dehumanizing, but it's okay. It's fine. We're making it through. So my methods changing from undergrad, I used to take notes by hand. I used to be at every lecture. I used to like be able to prepare um, for class beforehand by reading the textbook. And now it's a little bit less, it's a little bit more chaotic because it's just going like 10 times faster. Um, I've used Anki in medical school. I'm not using it as much right now just because it's not really working for me this block, but it's worked for me in the past. Yeah, a lot more like quick studying, um, reviewing material like on the weekends or finding time for things. There's just really not like one specific way that I think that works for everybody, but things that have definitely changed is I, I just have to keep moving. I set time goals for studying as well, where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna spend this much time on this and then I need to move on because you can't know it all. You just really can't. Um, some MCAT tips. I have heard a lot of good things about UWorld. That's expensive, but it exists. Um, I personally just read the Kaplan books, um, took notes on all of the material, and then did the practice problems as well as the practice like AAMC question banks. The question banks were really helpful. I also think like you could do a variety of books. You could do a variety of question banks. Again, UWorld has been tossed around by people at Vanderbilt as something that they really like. It is expensive and I think that is a barrier for people for like doing well on the MCATs relative to other people. But if you have like extra resources, UWorld is nice. I would say like practice questions, practice tests, feeling like good about identifying where you're like messing up or what things you're not so solid on and like chipping away at like one thing and like, okay, I'm gonna get really solid on this or I'm gonna be really solid on this and that can help you like boost your score in places that you're not doing so well. That's pretty general, but there you go. Okay, this one, I hear all the time that you should start studying for step one little by little starting your first semester. Do you think that is realistic with all the studying you already have to do? When, if you aren't already, do you plan to start studying for step one? <laughs> ah, step one scares me. Um, step one is probably gonna be pass fail, like most likely gonna be pass fail when I take it. And from talking to mentors, it sounds like that should be within reach as far as like the rigor of our curriculum goes. So I would say that I've like started studying for step in the sense that I like am keeping up with material in the sense that I use like first aid. I'll show you. In the sense that I like have a step one book and I use first aid resources. This is an old version. You can get an old version. You don't need like a brand new one. Um, you can also like download Anki decks that have step one resources in them. Um, so in the sense that I've like reviewed material that is relevant to step one, yes, I've started studying for it, but I haven't, I haven't done like a dedicated study time for step one because <laughs> like keeping up with like classwork right now is already a lot. So I think if you have a ton of free time, if your curriculum isn't as rigorous, like starting to study for step one can look like studying like the adjacent material in like a first aid book or in another step one studying material, like studying the adjacent material and knowing sort of like what test takers are looking for. Because there is so much information that you're gonna learn your first and second year, like you probably won't remember everything that you learned, but it doesn't hurt to like sort of have a good first pass at it. So no, I'm not studying for it right now. Um, I'm just trying to keep up. But when I do plan to start studying for it, so next year, like our second year, I guess in a couple of months, we have shelf exams at the end of each rotation. And so we'll have to learn like all these clinical things for medicine and surgery and ob and all these different things. And then we have a dedicated step one studying period, which I think is like, I don't know how long it is. It's like 10 weeks maybe. Um, and people will take 
however many weeks they want, take the exam and then have the rest off as a break. So I'm not really sure, but I think that it'll be fine. I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get there. I've just learned that like med school's stressful enough that I'm like one day at a time, <laughs> one day at a time, great. Um, okay, are there any older students 35 and up in your graduation class or cohort? Um, I don't know if we have any people who are 35, but I think we have people who are like pretty close to that age. Um, I know we have someone who's almost 30. We have some MIDP um, students who like have already gotten their PhD and are coming to medical school. So not the MD PhD route, but like have a PhD are now doctor so and so in the PhD sense and now are in medical school. So they're all like close to 30 or above 30. Um, so it's not unusual, no, to have to have people in their 30s in medical school. So there are older students in our class, older students. How do you spend your summers as a med school, as a med student? How many med schools do people usually apply to? How long do the terms of semesters run? Are semesters longer, shorter, or the same as undergrad? So that's a lot of questions. And my answer to that is it depends on where you go. So um, how do I spend summers as a med student? We have a month off in August, so we go all the way through July. So um, I'll probably just spend my summer relaxing. Some schools will have you like research over the summer. I know that MD, PhD students here are researching over the summer, they're doing a rotation. So it just depends on where you go. We do have a dedicated like research period of time our third year, so we don't need to do that during the summer. So I'm just gonna relax because everybody's overworked and we work six days a week, most weeks in the next, in the upcoming week. So I'm just gonna relax. <laughs> um, and then how many med schools do people usually apply to? I think I've like alluded to this before, but I think anywhere from like eight to 20 is like a good sweet spot if you're sort of like applying to a bunch of reach schools. I applied to 12 and got some reactions that that was like kind of a low number. Eight to 20, like above 12 is more common than not. Um, that's what I would say, especially if you are applying to some like higher caliber schools, it's good to have like a wide range. And then how long do the terms and semesters run? Again, this depends on the school you go to. I have a friend at a DO school who says that his schedule is very similar to how it was in undergrad. I have people that I know who go to KU who have like a fall break and the summer break and the winter break and they have like, multiple weeks off, um, but they do have a two-year curriculum. For us, we've had very little breaks. We've had like, man, we had a week off for spring break. We had two weeks off for Christmas, but we were still studying for an exam. We had like one three-day weekend once. Um, so a year, we go a year and we have like a two, two weeks off eventually somewhere in there. Um, so definitely really long here, but it depends on where you go. So if, if like having breaks and taking things in bite-sized chunks is really important to you, the schedule at Vanderbilt is maybe not for you. If you can handle that or that's something that you like or you think that like having a one-year preclinical is like what you want and you're willing to do the like super long, like full year curriculum, then this is a good fit for you. Great, okay, so we have two more questions and then, well, I, I guess a couple. We have a couple more questions and then I'm gonna cut this off and get to work. What keeps you motivated in your lowest moments of med school and what specialty are you currently most interested in? So in my lowest moments of med school, I actually reached this like two weeks ago. I think I know, I think I know in my lowest moments, like I know what to do to get out of them because I have been in therapy before. Um, I recognize like what self-care activities I need to do, what boundaries I need to draw, what adjustments I need to make. Um, what keeps me motivated. It's really hard coming up on the end of the year. I feel like we all feel really burnt out. So this is maybe not like the best time for me to answer this question, but I think like in my lowest moments, if possible, if I can see like the big picture or if I can be reminded that like, even if I'm feeling like I'm not getting the material, um, like being reminded that I am a good clinician um, and I work well with patients and like why I'm in medical school is always like a cheesy answer, but like true. If I'm having a really bad day or I haven't passed my quiz or I just like feel overwhelmed by material, if I have a really good like interaction with a patient in clinic, or help somebody in some way, I feel like that sort of centers me back on like, why am I here? Because I think even, and this is something that you might run into in a two year um, preclinical program, is like, it's kind of easy to get lost and be like, why am I doing this? Like it's, 
there are days where you don't want to anymore. <laughs> there are weeks maybe where you don't want to anymore. So I think I would recommend finding some coping skills, signing up for therapy, figuring out like what's gonna keep you going when you don't want to with any part of your being anymore. Cause that will happen. It will happen eventually. Um, what specialty am I interested in right now? If I chose today, I would be a hospitalist or I would do pulmonology critical care, like work in the ICU. I like acute and I like general. So I think um, a hospitalist has like an awesome schedule. They get to see everything. They get to run codes. And it's a little bit more specific than emergency medicine. I'm, I don't love emergency medicine just because it's like stabilize and then send them out. I, I get sort of like the pondering of like, what's going on? What's the diagnosis? What's this mystery? I wanna figure out labs. I wanna spend a little bit more time thinking about it, but not as much time as I would in like primary care. Yeah, so that's what I would do. And then um, last question is, is there a lot of collaboration in medical school or is it very competitive? I would say it, we have a pass fail program here. So as far as like between students, everybody's very amicable. Um, there are study groups, there are lots of review sessions. People are like working together. I would say internally, it feels very competitive to me because I compare myself to other people, but it's not like, somebody's trying to sabotage me. So I would say that the, com the competition piece is still there even in a pass-fail program because everybody is like internally motivated to be good. And when you're comparing yourself to like 90 of the top students across the country, it's like sometimes it feels competitive and you don't like it when people do better than you, but not in the sense that you want them to do poorly, just in the sense that you want to do well as well as them. Yeah, cause we don't have like a ranking. There's no like internal or external ranking, I guess, as far as like, oh, this person is number one in the class. Like we don't have numbers associated with us, which is good because the numbers that we do have, even though they like don't matter, still upset me. That's who I am. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's the end of these questions. I, I'm sort of glad that I waited to answer them until now just because I wouldn't have been able to answer them fully before. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope this is helpful. And I hope some of you who ask these questions are still like watching um, because it's been a while since these questions were asked. Stay tuned for the like questions about first year poll, um, either on my Instagram, which is Ali Bonbon, or on like the YouTube community page. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.